Okay, uh, let's go again. So, pairings, um, although I nearly mucked up that last game, pairings are not, don't seem to be as hard as yesterday. That was uh, really, really tough pairings yesterday. So, I wonder, will it change now? After two wins this morning, will things change? While we're waiting, uh, let's have a look at some title players or something. Uh, Volkov, is he playing or was it Romar playing? I think Romar. Hmm, he's playing a bullet game. C5 problem. It's a C5, yeah. Oh, does Queen E2 hit Bishop F8 with Queen B8? Oh! Ah, oh, we got a game. Okay. I think E4 again, why not? It's quite okay this morning. So, um, what about a winner or something? A 1920 winner? Uh, take her. Queen G4 takes B4. Wait, so, oh, I think B4. Is this a line? I've forgotten, actually. <laughs> uh, looks okay. If I get to play Bishop D3 and Queen G4, I'll be happy. So, um, yeah, king looks weak, maybe. Greek gift, bishop h7. Is Greek gift working here? Was e5 a big problem? Greek gift looks to be working. Takes, take, knight, check. <laughs> king moves. How's Greek gift not working? There's, there's no amazing um, check, or is there? Oh, let's just do it. I don't know. There's only 96 of King G6. Let's rule that out. So Queen H5, Queen E5, Queen H7, Knight G6, Queen H7, the Rook moves Queen F7. Then think about getting some more resources in. Uh, so there's at least a factual there after the Rook moves. So king move to g8, queen h5, rook moves somewhere, queen f7 with at least perpetual. I think the French defense player definitely needs to know the Greek gift because they weakened h7 usually in, in this sort of line. The knight here is not defending h7. That Greek gift is the bishop sacrifice in case anyone is wondering what I'm talking about. Bishop takes h7. Tantic. Right, so I've got at least a perpetual of queen f7. Um, now queen h7, maybe murky, check. Knight g8 after. So I'll take here. Maybe slowly carry on the attack. The knight's pinned at the moment, so what about f4? The counter sack with knight e5 might be on the cards. Here, what about check though? Check. King f8. In that position, check. Knight g8. Check. King f7. I want to play something like f4, so I can castle, then rook f3, then rook h3. Have I got time for f4? I 
I'll go with the perpetual I think after knight e5 if there's nothing else I'm hoping f4 is ok so knight e5 I'd take queen e5 and maybe try for perpetual if nothing else worst case scenario otherwise I get to play with castles and rook f3 Actually, he opens up the f file. Takes, takes, takes. Check. F files open for rook f1. Check. Check. He can't play knight e5. This looks like a good Greek gift scenario. If I've got castles and rook f3, surely it's a good Greek gift scenario. So now he's attacking my queen. Check, check, check. I can take g7 here because there's no knight g8. Check, check, take g7, carry on after that. So here the bishop's attacked though, I'll have to work out what to do now. Queen g6, there's no, just to get a bit of time to work out what to do. There's no queen f7 here. Uh, I can sack the bishop. What else? I can play f5 for f6. That's dangerous, isn't it? f5. So taking the bishop, there's f6. And knight h7 of king f8. If he took there, right, what if I just castle queen side, uh, it's queen a5, if I play rook d1, it's knight e3, takes, you can take the knight, if I play knight h7, knight h7, king moves to f6, say, there's no queen g7, king, king a check, king e7. Isn't that worth playing anyway? Queen sack. Okay, he's getting out of the checks. Uh, if I play King E2 or my Queen's protecting here. Queen E2, Knight F5. I can play Rook D1 after. Rook d2, king takes e3, if knight d5 to take, uh, knight c5 to okay, I want to play rook d1. Maybe rook d6, g4, okay, king f2 looks cosy, away from the knights, there's g4, it's fragile, it's a pin, g4, or queen c7, rook d7. There's a check and then check on f6 here. It's going a bit of time for g4. I'll get g4 in here. Rook f7, queen h8. These knights are a bit fragile, surely. Well, he's keeping it uh, on the clock. He's keeping it on the pressure on the clock. If knight g7, rook d4, and then queen g7. If knight e7, I mean queen h8, actually. King f7, okay, not queen h8. Think about that. Knight e7. What about just h4 and just march the pawn to the 8th? Or rook d4, no, he's protecting. Bishop will be protecting after. There's a check here, okay. Can I just, just double or something? Rook d3. Um, I'll, I'll get this pawn going. It's a bit of a menace now, surely. For 
8-7. Giving up the queen, but I'm getting three pass pawns over here. I'm getting the rook, his knight's going to be in pre. It's going to be with check, he's actually going to lose three pieces if he's not careful with rook h7 takes and then take on d4. Oh. Well, I think I've got lots of material here. I don't mind simplifying a bit for rook h7. Oh well, um, yeah, yeah, that was fun. I thought the old Greek gift is good. Um, by the way, I don't know how many of you have got the Oxford English um, Companion to Chess. It's really good. It explains things like Greek gift and loads and loads of other terms and players. So if you want to improve your chess culture, I recommend um, the Oxford com uh, sort of Companion to Chess. I wonder if I've got it around actually. Um, it's really great. I just I find it very enjoyable to read. Uh, so that chess dictionary and, and also lots of players mentioned. But Greek gift, going to really assess the Greek gift on its on this particular position. Here I thought there's at least a perpetual. Now knight e5 I thought was um, a good idea, but here I've, this f file. So check. Check, check castles maybe with with check. Knight f5, maybe rook e1, and then the attack can carry on later with g4 maybe. Also c6 might be useful for bishop c5 if the queen wasn't there. So that was a dangerous um, Greek gift scenario, um, difficult to defend in a five-minute game especially. Queen sack was interesting, but I've got this running H pawn. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.